Good day there, subscribers. Today I'm joined by Craig Nickel. He's the founder and CEO of Graphene Manufacturing Group, which just started trading in Canada on the TSX Venture under the symbol GMG. Craig, welcome. How are you? I'm well, thanks, James. Good to be back on. Uh, just a note for our viewers, this is a transatlantic, transpacific uh, video call, so if things go a little glitchy, don't blame us. Uh, Craig, so congratulations on the company going public. Uh, I assume that that coincided with a raise of some capital. That's correct. We're very happy to have, uh, after four and a half years here in Brisbane, Australia, to have our, our, our uh, company list on the TSXV. Uh, that coincided with about uh, an extra $4 million uh, uh, that came in with uh, $2 million coming in from the CUSPA CPC RTO we did and $2 million from a sub receipts raise. Wow, fantastic. So uh, then what is the planned uh, sort of rollout for the various products that you have got? Before we get to today's press release about the aluminum ion battery, I want to just talk about the sort of portfolio of products that you have at this point. Sure. So, so James, we're a clean tech company which makes uh, uh, a graphene from natural gas. Um, so we crack natural gas and make hydrogen and graphene. And with that, we we then put that graphene into uh, some coating uh, a coating system, which we spray on air conditioning systems, which increase their energy efficiency. Um, and we're right now working with some large companies on demo sites to show what we can do for them um, and i hope to have some more news on that um, coming shortly uh, then we have another product which is called our g lubricants which is a, a small amount of graphene into engineals which increases the uh the, the, the friction uh, reduction for the oil and also reduces the wear which can um yeah, studies have shown to reduce fuel consumption as well so those are the two products we have in the market right now we, of course, have our graphene powder that we uh, make and, and sell, uh, but we really are focusing on our downstream products. Um, and of course, as, as you've alluded to uh, the press announcement today, uh, we also have our battery um, uh, manufacturing business as well, which we've just announced. Sure. So that's, uh, that's kind of the thing that I'm really most intrigued about. Um, this battery is, uh, you know, I think of a, a new battery entrant on the global stage and uh, you know having been a big sort of student of lithium ion batteries and the history of its evolution I've in fact invented the inventor in, uh, sorry I interviewed the inventor of the lithium ion battery John Goodenough at the University of Texas a couple of years ago and that mm -hmm. thing took over 20 years from sort of mm -hmm. initial prototype to commercial installation and so I'm mm -hmm. just wondering, uh, does that, is that the same kind of development sort of timeline we can expect with this battery? We'll be going into that market with an interchangeable battery that uh, we'll have uh, a coin cell battery prototype within six months and a pouch pack battery, which will be interchangeable with your lithium ion within about 18 months. Um, so of course, uh, production um, based off the interest from we receive from customers on uh, those prototypes will, will take a bit longer, um, but that's the, that's the space we look to, the timeline we look to, to, to be able to come out with these commercial prototypes. We are literally going to be taking existing lithium ion uh, battery cell manufacturing equipment and putting our, our product through it. So the time scale to be able to get this to market will be significantly reduced and de-risked. Um, there is something like uh, 40 different global manufacturers of lithium ion uh, partners who can help us bring this uh, new product to market but it's essentially using the same equipment only less of it and only using our graphene and aluminium sure sorry craig uh your signal broke up spectacularly in the middle of that discussion <laughs> so would you mind repeating that please i'm sorry to do that to you Sure. So uh, our our graphene aluminium battery uses only aluminium and uh, and, gra and graphene that we make ourselves, and that material is used in the lithium ion equipment uh, that you would be normally using to make lithium ion um, uh, batteries. So um, when we look to bring this to market, 
there, there already are something like 40 global manufacturers of lithium iron uh, uh, production equipment suppliers in the world. And uh, so hence we're, we're, we're working with, um, with various uh, different companies to see uh, what technology we can use immediately to bring this into production. Wow, that's uh, that's good. So it's not going to be a twenty-year wait. <laughs> no, it won't. And we'll we'll have a technology which is essentially the same voltage and the same uh, same shape, uh, except it will be have you know anywhere up to three times energy density, and it will charge and and uh, anywhere up to seventy times faster, uh, just because it's 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 what's called a a hybrid battery superconductor. So it has enormous energy density as well as enormous power density. Uh, and, and that's just from the sheer nanochemistry that we have been working with uh, University of Queensland for, on, um, with, uh, for some time now. Mm -hmm. So this sounds like a rather significant disruption to the capabilities of rechargeable batteries. I mean, Lithium ion batteries were one major disruption, but this sounds like it's going to completely disrupt them again because you don't need nickel, you don't need cobalt, you don't need nope. lithium. We don't need copper. We don't need copper. Um, we need aluminium foil, uh, aluminium chloride, which is the precursor to aluminium, um, and our graphene. Uh, it's a graphene battery, effectively, 30% uh, by weight. Uh, and then we have uh, a, a few small other items and of course, uh, a tiny bit of uh, IP in there, which is patented that um, we're the global uh, license, uh, exclusive license or, or from University of Queensland. So there's some fundamental science around the aluminum ion battery and why it's, um, it's, a, it's a higher energy density and higher uh, power density. Um, and I, I don't um, want to go into that. There's lots of papers on the web around that. Um, but what we've got access to is the ability to make it um, at, at a very high um, energy density with our graphene. So we supply a whole supply chain for these batteries. Uh, all we need is uh, natural gas and electricity, and then uh, to make our graphene, and then that plant could be anywhere near, uh, anywhere and anywhere in the world effectively. And then you have your, uh, your aluminium ion battery, which will then just take your aluminium, which can be effectively anywhere in the world as well. Um, and we, affect, we then have a battery that can be made out of those two plants. Um, so it gives uh, sovereign capability and um, resilience around the energy sector. Um, and it uh, also reduces the amount of mining, which um, is, 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 of course, can be sustainable. But if you can uh, use 90% of the, um, of, uh, you know, well, one of the highest recycled materials of, of aluminium, in your batteries, um, it's obviously going to be uh, better for the world in total. Sure. Um, I'm curious as to what is the sort of greenhouse gas uh, footprint in the manufacturing process for creating your graphene? Does it mitigate from the carbon in the air in any way, shape or form? Yeah, so we have a, um, a pretty good handle on our um, processes and uh, on how um, CO2 intensive they are. and um, and then, of course, we'll be looking at, at that for the batteries and we'll be coming out shortly around what that would be, what that means um, for our batteries in a comparative. Um, but the supply chain for a lithium ion battery uh, as, as it stands today is, is many countries and also uh, many different mines um, in, in different parts of the world and many different processes to make it into nanomaterials. And, and also, the fire and, and safe risks, safe, safety hazards that come with a lithium battery are frequently reminded uh, to us when we see cars that, um, that, that burst into flames or um, have batteries that burst in people's pockets or being you know, burst from being charged. Um, aluminium ion batteries don't have that problem. Uh, so we, we see lots of elements that, that, that an aluminium ion, graphene aluminium ion battery has that are um, quite, um, I think, uh, going to be quite captivating for, for the market. There are many different applications we can bring this to um, in, in the market, and, and that's what we're working through on which application we should, we should go first or, or, or second or third, because uh, we've already got quite, quite some interest. I'm curious as to 
the financial outlook for the company. Um, what is the path to profitability looks like? How much revenue are you going to generate in 2021? Uh, we'd love to say what we could put out for this year. Unfortunately, we're not we're not putting a guidance out yet. Um, we're um, we're working hard on our TXR sales, uh, which is our, our air conditioning efficiency coding system. Um, and we've been out in the market for some time, uh, despite COVID um, and a bunch of other different issues. Uh, we've punched through it into uh, a number of different demo projects uh, that we're now trying to progress into some contracts. Um, and that's the main focus uh, for, for revenue. Of course, our, our graphene lubricants as well, uh, it concentrates. Um, that's also there, a, a key driver for our revenue. Um, so we have, uh, we think, uh, you know, about four and a half to five million dollars in cash. And we see a burn rate of around three hundred thousand dollars a month. Uh, these are all Australian dollars. So we've, we've got a window um, to, to launch the sales and launch the projects that we want to see. Um, and and um, that's what we plan to do this year. Your plan is to re recognize revenue before you run out of money. Yes. Well, that's the game we've been in. That's that, a hell of that's a business the, plan. <laughs> yes, that's the game we've been in uh, for some time. Uh, we've done four and a half years of growth uh, from a from a, a, a slide deck uh, through to now with um, 20 people or so in various different um, countries. And that's the, that's the plan we're, we're working on. Um, and we hope to come with news uh, shortly. Sure. Do you have any uh, significant sort of corporate partnerships that you can talk about at this point? Uh, none to, to, to speak of in uh, of materiality. Um, there's, there's, there are different companies that, that do come and have discussions. We have some disruptive technology. We believe we're the only um, company that's, that's, that's in this space of cracking uh, methane uh, into, into graphene and hydrogen. It produces a high quality product and low cost. And, um, and we think it's quite scalable. Um, we've got a background in, in this energy markets uh, uh, for over 20 years each. And there's a number of us in this space in the company. So we've got some strong credentials. Um, so we, we think we've got a lot of there that, that could be uh, interested for big companies. Um, but where we're, we continue to march on and to show that we can deliver. Um, and, and that's our focus. Sure. OK. Um, getting back to the batteries, finally, I'm, I'm just because that's what intrigues me the most. Is it uh, how long do you think it would be before you could scale that whole technology platform up to supply automobiles as well as personal electronic devices? Yeah, that's, um, that's what we're working on right now. We're working on a, a, some kind of um, scale project that would enable us to, to recognize um, the value in this. Um, there are multiple markets, grid, uh, phones, cars, uh, and, um, you know, of course, large trucks and, um, and even, um, you know, laptops. So it's, it's working out the, the space that is, and then what that scale would be, would, would, um, certainly be coming back to the market with, um, once we've worked out what, what we plan to do and where we plan to, to put it as well, because our plan is completely mobile. It can be in any, any country. Um, you've got all these different options that, um, that in, in your in, in had our battery in your phone, uh, it would charge in a minute and likely last for three days um, if you take our, um, our our numbers. So uh, from University of Queensland, so that's one market could be quite attractive for for our product, um, and we can make it at, at the right cost, um, and we could make it uh, in any country that um, that we need to make it. So there's that application, but then there's uh, a lot better maybe revenues that we could attract with a large scale grid battery or even um, even in a, a joint partnership with a high profile EV company. So there's uh, lots of uh, things to chew through. And James, I think the most difficult thing will be to try to work out where to go, not necessarily the tech uh, and putting it into uh, implementation. Okay, Craig. Well, we're going to leave it there for now. That's a great uh, that's a great catch up on the story. I'm uh, very much looking forward to uh, talking to you guys more and watching this product suite roll out. I mean, I I can't tell you how excited I am. 
And uh, so we'll keep watching and wish you the best of luck. Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, I really appreciate your time. Thanks, James. <laughs>